So first, uh, who can uh, propose a standard scenario? Uh, this is something that we already have in the, in the regulation as we propose in the opinion, st and still uh, there are uh, some uh, discussion uh, with the European Commission, maybe there are some, some changes that could happen, but our idea is that uh, everybody, so all individual companies, operators, uh, model clubs, can uh, propose to the National Competent Authority a standard scenario. Then uh, the, stand the National Competent Authority uh, can uh, uh, develop, can verify the standard scenario, can approve them, and they will be valid once they are approved only in the nation where the standard scenario is being proposed as they've been approved. On the other side, the National Competent Authority can propose the, those standard scenario as an altmoc to EASA. But we'll be not, no, not only the only one that can propose uh, this kind of standard scenario to EASA. Also, uh, European level association, industry, operator, model association. So, organizations that uh, do not work at uh, uh, national level, but more at European level, can propose still a standard scenario to EASA. Once EASA uh, will have reviewed the, stand the risk assessment, identified the, the risk mitigation, uh, then we will publish the standard scenario as NAMC. And we will use our normal uh, rulemaking process. This means that uh, uh, we either publish as an MPA, so we'll have a full consultation, as, as normal we have, normally is a three months consultation, and we in where all uh, stakeholders can provide comments, or uh, if uh, we uh, there will be the condition, uh, we will uh, uh, use a, an accelerated procedure. Uh, we can use a direct publication uh, in case um, we can give credit to other form of uh, um, consultation. For example, uh, the standard scenario that we are going to discuss uh, tomorrow, uh, since we are mostly reusing the standard scenario already developed by JARUS and there is a, 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 a consultation process that is public, uh, defined uh, within the, the JARUS process, and we know that most or almost all our European NAA are part of JARUS, so in order also to speed up the process, uh, we will uh, get credit to that kind of uh, uh, of um, uh, consultation, and in addition, the the meeting that we are held in these days will consider as a focus consultation, in which we will collect all uh, additional comments, and uh, and then we will be able to publish uh, the standard scenario as an MC, so as a decision that uh, uh, directly signed by our uh, chief executive. Uh, and it can be published as soon as uh, the regulation will be adopted by the, the Commission. So if uh, the US regulation will be adopted by the end of this year, soon after, I don't know if it will be able by still the end of the year, but beginning of next year, the first IMC with the standard scenario could be published. We expect that in the future uh, we are going to publish a number of standard scenario and ideally we would like to cover the most common um, operation in order then to, uh, to help as much as possible both the operator and uh, the, uh, the NAA. So we need to have to have some sort of prioritization. So we'll have, uh, we are thinking uh, which criteria we may use uh, to prioritize standard scenario. Uh, when we publish standard scenario, this will be valid all over Europe. So if there will be some scenario that are, uh, for some reason, are only linked or applicable to one or, or limited number of your nation, this cannot fit as a, a European level standard scenario, so cannot be in our uh, regulation. So the first will be the acceptability by the EU member state. Uh, for sure, another criteria will be the number of potential interested operators. So we need to focus on those that uh, can reduce, can have a better impact on uh, member state and operator. But uh, uh, one of the input that also we had, that I think was also interesting, is to, to verify what is the impact on the safety or the public health. 
for example, if there is a, a standard scenario that could help develop some operation that could, could be a very good benefit in, uh, for the society, so this uh, we can consider this kind of uh, uh, information and higher uh, raise the priority of the standard scenario. And then for sure also the feasibility. If uh, uh, the scenario that is proposed, uh, it's we think that is feasible or not. Anyway, we will not do the prioritization by ourselves. We will involve member state. We will involve also a new drone committee uh, that uh, is going to be established in uh, in this day, where uh, will be an advisory body with uh, all the stakeholder. So will be a new advisory body to EASA, like we have uh, on uh, other other domain. So we'll make sure that. Uh, the, the prioritization that we will propose is shared with them. We will have uh, their input, actually your input, because he, at the end, in some way, you will you can influence this one, and we can find the the list. Question on uh, the process to approve and on the priority to give to the standard scenario. Uh, two questions. Um, first, is there a plan to establish a list of uh, standard scenarios that would be needed to be developed in priority to structure maybe a bit the work of the community uh, or drive the work, let's say, of the community? And the second question, I'm assuming that if um, a manufacturer, for instance, develops a standard scenario, it automatically com becomes, if it's recognized by ESA uh, or uh, a CA, it automatically becomes uh, public domain and license free. Okay, uh, so for for the first one, uh, yeah. So the the list that we'll develop at this moment, we have not developed yet the list. Uh, we were we are conce we're concentrating on uh, developing the format of standard scenario and, and the process to develop a standard scenario. And for the the list, I think that uh, what uh, we are doing, we uh, we are uh, uh, taking inputs from member states on what are the 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 number, the what are the scenario for which they they issued m the highest number of, uh, of authorization, and this will uh, be uh, our priority. Regarding the those developed by the industry, uh, since we will publish uh, the uh, the standard scenario as uh, an AMC, uh, what we will uh, do is we assume that uh, it should be accessible by the operator otherwise then the, the operator will not be uh, be able to to apply it so in case they will have some property data then uh, it will be difficult for all operator to you to use it so we expect it should be limited Robert van Newland Tarpas um, are you aware of the market and sector uh, survey that has been done by UVS International, this report, uh, with more than 1,000 responders? I think that would be a good basis to, uh, to start with, to see which operations are being done today. And the other question was which operation you, are, uh, you want to do in the future. So that gives a good uh, first insight of which scenarios to start with. So sure, uh, we are aware of uh, that document and uh, we will use as an input. So uh, at this moment, uh, the we only we we developed only the first standard scenario that was helping us to pave the way on how the standard scenario will look like. So we did not start uh, to to develop other. So we'll use uh, also that input to define the future of how we'll do, but still the, we don't have the list. And something that we will uh, define now in the, in the next, next months. Yes, we are, uh, we are in contact with Peter, so for sure this is not a problem. Natalia, if I may, in any case in my presentation now, uh, I mean, uh, one of the uh, points to, to be taken into account is that um, 
the way we see uh, standard scenarios is uh, as a frame based on the, on the, on the risk of those uh, of of operations. So we are primarily uh, driven by by the by how we address the risk and not driven by the use cases or or applications, which means that uh, we are not intending to 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 produce a standard scenarios. For example, for aerial photography or uh, precision ar agriculture, but instead to create a frame where these uh, many op operations can can take place addressing these these uh, uh, use cases, as long as the operations uh, can uh, be fitted within the the limits of the of the scenario. Nevertheless, there might be. Some particular cases. Uh, this morning, uh, the uh, the case of the, uh, 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 for example, uh, uh, air modeling or drone racing, for example, that may have some particularities. Some may pose some uh, specific risks that might mm, lead to 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 develop uh, some scenario. But the policy in general is that we are uh, basing our uh, the, uh, how we generate uh, uh, scenarios based on on risk. But you uh, hopefully agree with me that you want to do uh, those scenarios where uh, the operators can make uh, money. And if you're taking uh, one of the scenarios here at the end of the list where you see that not much operators are interested in, so there's not much money going out there uh, to start with. This is one of the yeah. criteria that... Uh, we have a number of potential interested operators, it's exactly this one. So we want to make sure that we do a scenario that then is, is uh, interesting for the operator, so... Please. Uh, Jürgen Lefebvre again from the Swiss Air Modeling Federation. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's a very loyally question. I'm a lawyer, so the first question I get when I see people talking about um, um, a decision-making process is where can I find the precise steps that the decision-making process will need to go through? What is the, the input from member states and what is the input from stakeholders at which point in the process? And will this process be published somewhere so that we can actually see uh, um, what we'll have to go through if we, uh, if we want to propose or comment on one of those standard scenarios? Thank you. So this will be part of, uh, of the AMC to, uh, to the regulation. So at this moment, we already have uh, an article that uh, is addressing the ALTMOC, even if we are having some discussion with uh, the legal service on the, uh, on the acceptability from a legal point of view of that article. So uh, even if uh, the, there could be some changes on this point of view, still uh, in the AMC, so in the decision that we will provide, we will give all the detail of the process in order to pro propose a standard scenario. Yangela. Um, one big first step to start all those activities here was the um, CESAR um, outlook study on drones a couple of years ago. Um, wouldn't it be helpful to have uh, an update of this study to get a better idea on the number of potential interested operators or the fields of industry that where you have the acceptabl acceptability in the EU? Yeah, so th that study is, uh, we need to have uh, some resources also to, to repeat it. So uh, I think at uh, this moment we, we have uh, experience from the member states on the number of, of, uh, uh, of authorization provided. So this will be our first input, so which will coming exactly from the field. Then also the study from uh, UVSI could be helpful. So maybe in, I don't know, in the future, if we find funds, we can do it, but at this moment, I don't think we are planning to do it. Yeah, so if Cesar, uh, yeah, <laughs> if Cesar will have fun to, to update, but I think that for this first uh, phase, we have enough data to develop, uh, to understand which are the most important uh, standard scenario to be developed. And we, we envisage that maybe there will be, I don't know, 
our goal will be to have at least one decision per year in which we will provide the most interesting standards, the most important standard scenario. No, please. Yeah, uh, Max Schack from the uh, European Cockpit Association. I, I'm not sure if I understood this correctly. In one of your prior slides, you showed that there is a way that the National Competent Authority can come up with its own standard scenario, which is then only applicable to that member state. Is that individual standard scenario then the proposed Altmock that is submitted to EASA, or do they also have the possibility to submit an Altmock to EASA? And if that is the case, why would a national competent authority have a separate way to do standard scenarios if we have an internationally agreed upon system? Um, is that just the means for them to, if EASA is because of lack of resources, not fast enough to go ahead and be a little ahead of the game for their country, where they say, in my particular country, there is this interest, and eventually that would then be adopted by EASA, or is it going to be a totally different type of standard scenario set up, a different SOAR process, and then why would we have that? Okay, so first for the process, uh, what, which kind of methodology to be used? Uh, in our regulation, we don't mandate to use the SOAR, so potentially someone can come and use a different methodology. The important is that at the end, uh, the mitigation measure identified, and if it's a national, uh, is if it's proposed to a national competent authority, they are satisfied with them. If it's proposed to EASA, we are satisfied uh, with the methodology and the, the outcome of the methodology. So at the end, we, uh, we expect that even if the methodology could be different, the results, or the, for sure the level of safety should be the same, and the results, more or less, should be also equivalent first. Uh, regarding so the the, the standard the national standard scenario, for several reasons can can happen that uh, there is a need for a scenario that is only for one nation because uh, they have some peculiarity. For example, the, in the northern uh, European nation, we have very uh, large spaces, and they have some conditions that are not applicable to other um, nations. So we can envisage that there will be some scenarios that are only valid for that area. So uh, th uh, in that way, uh, we will not only be use the, the top line, so we'll, they will have a standard scenario only valid for those and will not be at the European level. When instead the, co the competent authority believes that their scenario could be useful for the rest of Europe, they can then propose as an ALTMOC. You said the most important thing. We're all interested in the same level of safety. Yeah. Again, I mean, maybe I'm just naive. I can see where there's regional differences, but as far as safety is concerned, that should not make a difference. We, have, we will have also some, we have a standardization activity performed by ASA, so still uh, we will uh, uh, work with all NAA and uh, we will support them. And uh, at the end, yeah, uh, this is something new. So everybody needs to, uh, needs to, to learn. So I, I expect that at the beginning there could be some differences, but uh, this is inev inevitable. But then in the, long, in the long run, when we will mature all together, also because we have different level of maturity in Europe, when we will mature and EASA uh, will, will be there also to help uh, member states to better develop uh, their uh, skill also on the risk assessment in general, on all, uh, all the aviation uh, domain, at the end we will... Uh, we should keep this kind of uh, uh, same level of safety. To add something? Thank you. Maarten Bonnema, CA uh, the Netherlands. What I think uh, is uh, being, uh, what people do make mistakes about the uh, legal uh, uh, value of a standard scenario, it's an acceptable means of compliance. It's not the regulation itself. So whether it comes from EASA or it's nationally done, the, the methodology that's underlying is the same. So uh, I'm not too worried about uh, differences between national uh, standard scenarios and EASA developed national uh, or uh, standard scenarios. Um, just real quick, uh, not in the RPS community, but in the manned aviation side, uh, there's uh, a lot of issues with flags of convenience, so uh, there are issues. Uh, hopefully not in the area of SORA, but in other areas of aviation, there's definitely issues even within Europe. 
there's Europe and there's Europe. So, speaking from experience. Only short question, are there more details about the timetable for the standard scenarios uh, proposal and uh, how many of them you will invent in the next one to five years or say it like that? So in order to uh, publish standard scenario, uh, we need first of all to develop the, the, the risk assessment and identify the mitigation measures. So uh, we started now uh, with the first standard scenario that is ca it is coming from uh, that developed by Jarus. So this is what we discuss in the next days. But in the in the meantime, we are started to collect from member states what are the scenarios that are already in place. Uh, some of them, uh, they are uh, accompanied by a SORA-like risk assessment, some of them not also because the, they, they started much before the SORA was, uh, was available. So what we will do is uh, we will uh, complete together all this information and uh, we will carry out the risk assessment based on SORA, now the SORA is available. So uh, this will be our next pack package. So the, the list of standard scenarios actually are already in place, member states. So we, we think in this way we are covering several operations that today are already happening in the member state. Then uh, in, the, in the future we will receive so, uh, inputs from uh, all stakeholders. Some of them will be accompanied by a risk assessment already well structured for which we, we quickly will review it and we will approve. Some of them instead will be with uh, maybe a, a weaker risk assessment, so for which we need to have uh, quite more comprehensive review. And s so it's difficult now to say we ca we develop five, ten uh, standard scenario per year. Is something that we cannot tell. So it will depend on the complexity. But I think that uh, we have the possibility to develop the f those that uh, today are most used because so based on the, the experience that uh, they have. And just want to say for the for the process uh, for publishing uh, the the standard scenario. So uh, we envisage that in the future we will have a number of uh, standard scenario based on our acceptable means of compliance. So the the operator will use normally this process. Uh, we give the opportunity to the competent authority to propose something that is complementary to the MC. So this is the, the purpose of uh, the ALTMOC. This is an alternative means of compliance. So the ALTMOC should not be the, the primary uh, way, but should be the secondary wha uh, when the MC, so our standard standard is not available. Any other question on the process? Okay, so now uh, we can move to the, the introduction and to the standard scenario and to the structure. So we developed the first standard scenario, the first set of standard scenario, and uh, we took the opportunity to define uh, what would be the format. And uh, Daniel, uh, that led uh, this uh, activity, now will provide this information. 